everything in this universe is moving toward gaining speed. From faster cars to faster computers. In order to make it all happen, small parts and components of each computing unit or processor must be involved in doing their job. Today, we are talking about one of those parts to achieve your ideal speed in your computer, and that's primary memory or temporary storage called RAM. As always, we go through some of the basics real quick, starting with what is RAM? It stands for Random Access Memory. Just like SSDs and HDDs, RAM is the type of memory, but unlike those two devices, RAM can only store data while it's powered. So what does it do? The PC makes use of its speed by constantly overwriting and refreshing the data inside the RAM, so that the CPU and GPU can always have quick access to the relevant data. In other words, in order for data or program to run on a computer, it needs to be loaded into RAM first, and then the CPU can access the data or run the program. And if the memory is too low, it might not be able to hold all the data that the CPU needs and makes the system run slower during that process. Now that we know how RAM and speed are related, let's get started. The first crucial thing to note when dealing with RAM is DDR. It stands for Double Data Rate. All you need to know is that as a gamer, DDR has gone through 5 generations over the past two decades from DDR to DDR5. Which last one is the latest, but you have to keep in mind that in case you haven't upgraded your PC, then your DDR4 motherboard are not good for DDR5 memory. And that's because new motherboards are not backwards compatible and DIMM slots are different. While we are on the topic of motherboards, let's go through the RAM slots you can expect to find on each one. The ranges vary from older motherboards that support only 2 RAM slots up to the modern ones with support of 8 RAMs. Obviously, in 8 slot cases, you are not talking about gaming anymore. In fact, that's for some heavy loaded workstations. Clock speed. It's a specification that determines how fast RAM can process data and it's measured in megahertz. Of course, no need to mention, the higher clock speeds, the better gameplay experiences. The same rule goes for GPUs and CPUs, but do note that you need to spend way more money for those to achieve a faster speed. Just notice the fact that for the purposes of gaming, the difference between 3200 MHz and 4000 MHz is really not that much and not worthy of spending money. But you must think of capacity instead, which brings us here to the next part. Using multi-channel RAM. There is one key advantage to using multi-channel or a single channel memory, and that's added bandwidth. The more channels you have, the greater bandwidth, and as you may have guessed, it means better performance. And that's what makes it worth spending some money on. You might be wondering by now which RAM models are good to buy or how many RAMs capacity do you need, as there are so many varieties to choose from. Before jumping in to fully load your RAM slots, let's see how many RAMs you actually need. Well, as always, the answer is, it depends. First of all, you must determine what's your goal for having a high-speed computer that's populated with lots of high-speed RAMs. I will help you by making it brief and short so that you get some general ideas and decide later on. Well, in case you are using your computer for casual things like watching a clip or movie, or web surfing and collecting data for some projects or school researching, then 4 to 8 GB of RAM is more than enough, plus you may play some games too. Now let's make it more complicated and say you want to run the best latest games on the computer for your free time. In that case, depending on the game type and how much the FPS is important for you, then something between 16 to 32 GB is what you must be considering. In case you are choosing 32, then other than gaming, you can also go for a high quality streaming if you like. Unless you have bigger plans and want to separate the gaming PC from the streaming PC to gain the maximum performance, well in that case, things would be a little bit different, which is not what we are covering today, but do let me know that in the comments if you are interested to know about it. Moving on to the next level, the editing PC. How much RAM those editors need to make their hard work experience butter smooth? It actually depends on what programs you are using. For example, Adobe Premiere, especially when it comes to the rendering, an After Effects or Photoshop program, not to mention the 3D animation designing softwares. These would be considered as RAM killers. So I must say, 64GB is your sweet spot. I just want to add the fact that engineers and scientists will often have huge amounts of data to deal with, to the point that even a 128 or 256GB of RAM system loadout are not considered a luxury but a necessity to them. 
So never waste your money on something that's not making a huge difference on your system. For example, take a look at these benchmark stats, know more about different RAM performances and the results and finally decide on what's best for you to buy.